This second Sunday of Advent, our reading from Matthew's Gospel focuses us on to the prophets who foretold the coming of Christ and on to the prophetic voice of John in particular. John's is one of only three scriptural births that the church marks each year, the other two being Mary's and Jesus's, of course. So here we have a figure of obvious significance. Rabanus Maurus, the 8th century German theologian, wrote, Great then is John. Indeed, the Saviour himself testified to John's greatness when he said, Among those born of woman, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. He excels all, each and every one of us. He is greater than the prophets. He is superior to the patriarchs. Everyone born of woman is inferior to John, except the son of the Virgin, who is greater still. In all four Gospels, the birth of John is cited as the forerunner to the emergence of the good news of Jesus. So here on this second Sunday of Advent, we have before us in John both herald and prophet. And that prophetic voice comes from the wilderness, from the margins, from the edges. And from there, John addresses us. He calls us to be a people who speak the things of God into the life of the world in a way that brings others out of darkness and into the light of Christ. Augustine writes that John marks the boundary between the Old and the New Testament, citing Luke chapter 16, verse 16, where Jesus says the law and the prophets were in effect until John came. Since then, the good news of the kingdom is proclaimed and everyone is urged to enter into it. This is a life-giving and affirming witness from the moment of John's conception, spirit-filled and Christ-focused. John leapt with joy in his mother's womb in anticipation of Jesus' birth. To be a church shaped by John's witness is to be a community that is life-giving, an affirming, spirit-filled witness bringing Christ's message of hope to those who feel abandoned in the wilderness places of our society and our world, those wandering on the margins, those who feel isolated and unheard. In Matthew's Gospel, John's is the voice that shouts from the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him, an echo taken from verse 3 of the prophet Isaiah chapter 40. He calls us to be a people and a church that is preparing a way for the Lord, straightening his paths by first looking within itself to remove the barriers that create injustice, division and discord, and thereafter to look out into the world creating a community and a followership based on Christ, not on self. John's witness was selfless, faithful, passionate, sincere. Whereas the paths we navigate as individuals and as church can be twisted by our own ambitions, ego or fears. John's father, Zechariah, was promised a son filled with the spirit and power of Elijah to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Today we are called to surrender to the action of the Holy Spirit in us and to allow ourselves to be similarly shaped into a people fit for the Lord, faithful, hopeful, distinctive, committed servants of God. And John calls us to be a humble, repentant people, a people made clean in the waters of baptism, a people who speak into the world around us in ways that bring others to health and healing and restoration, an open people who witness to their faith in a loving and life-giving God in all that they do and all that they are. A church that has the grace to receive good news from the margins as well as to be good news to the margins. As we journey through Advent, as we wait, we are drawn onward by the voice of the prophets, urged to prepare ourselves, to right our hearts and our church, to rid ourselves of the arrogance of ego and self-interest and the leaven of malice, 
and to turn repentant with our faces set towards the coming Christ in humility, in adoration and in worship. 